So in the mixer still, if we were to go to the overhead channel, if, say if I want to add, uh, let's say, a delay, I click on that channel, go to delays, um, let's go for a stereo delay, mono to stereo, and it's actually opened it up over here again, because it's my main monitor, we drag it across to here, I can use my finger to drag it over I want around the screen, but let's just stick it here so I can see my channel strip still. Um, now what do I want to change on here, if I want to change the, the output mix, let's change the left mix a bit, so there we go, you can see, and the right, see I can change them, uh, change the groove a little bit, change the buttons, anything that's displayed on this screen is controllable really. There we go, I got that. It, there is a learning curve to using this, and it's best to sort of get a really good calibration and then save it on that. You can save the calibration stars. As you can see, I've saved this one as Cali 3, because I've been experimenting with it a bit. But um, yeah, it, it does take a quite a bit of getting used to, but it's just, you know, it's the same as doing anything as a learning curve to everything. One of the major limitations of this is the accuracy at the moment. I mean it's fairly accurate for anything that's in a large area on its own. So this fader for instance, it's easy to grab control. That pan, easy to grab control. Most of these buttons can change them easy enough. Um, let's turn that off. But smaller buttons such as the mute and solo down here can be quite tricky. I'm going to attempt to press the solo button. There we go, got solo. So it is doable, but um, as I said, there's the learning curve to get used to. And the other drawback to this at the moment, what I'm finding is when I'm trying to go up to the edge of the screen, it's actually working okay here because where it's going off, so you're losing accuracy, it's, the cursor's not going where you want it, but it's allowing you to go right up to the edge of the screen, which you can't always do. It's a bit, a bit hard to hear, you can just see the mouse is a little below my finger. If I run it along here, it's moving a bit down. And I can actually get to the side on here, that's quite a bit off. That would need recalibrating, I think. But um, basically, it just means sometimes it's a. I can't pick up the mixer screen, for example. All right, we're going to do some automation now. So if we come in, we can see automation there. Select that, and this is our automation lane for Gog Snare Two. Uh, so all I'm going to do is create a few points. Looks like that there. Create a point up there, I can drag that around. Drag some more points. Obviously, the more you zoom in, the higher degree of accuracy you're going to be able to get. But that's a, you can see there, some hand drawn in fades. So that works pretty well. Now, what I want to do here is some editing. I want to take out a section of audio. So I'm just going to move my playlet, my playhead, to say there, and I want to split the locators on these two overheads. So I'm going to highlight them along the top here. Split by locators. I don't want to do that. I actually wanted to do split by playhead. So cut that. Let's cut this here. I can then move these back if I want. similar fashion. Move these forward or back again. Actually move 
the slice along as well. Lovely smooth action there. Just another thing, gonna let's add some more processing in. So this is the um drum kit bus, so we're gonna add in what should we add in? Uh, let's just add in add in some metering. So we can see what's going on. Again, meters come over here, just drag it across quickly. Um let's have a look. So you can press all the buttons, change goniometer, see the correlation there. Let's get rid of that. Let's have let's just put some um, more dynamics on just so we can mess around with the settings. Let's put a compressor on there. And again, so over here, just move it across. So you can see I can control my attack ratio, the knee of the compressor, threshold, all the gains, threshold limiter, turn the limiter on and off. It's a quite a small button, but it is doable. Dials a turn the auto release on and off. So again, that's another compressor. Um, let's have a look. See if I've got any instruments out. Here we go. Rock organ. Let's open that up. Play my drawer bars here. Change all them. Nice and easy. Feels very intuitive. Different from a mouse. I can change all my controls here. So again, if this is a synth, say, or even if you wanted to automate these, you know, you could play along with this while it's um, playing. It just it feels a lot nicer to play with the controls on the screen with your finger then it does the twist knobs and a controller or use a mouse really it's the main benefit benefit is over a mouse knobs are okay but again with this you just get that immediate control with it you know there's no middleman a controller is the middleman this is you're going straight to that knob I want to turn that knob straight away I'm turning it just to recap then the screen and the wood are recycled materials. The wood is old pallets and old scrap wood. And the screen is um, recycled from an old computer. Plenty of parts recycled. These vents are made from an old desktop computer. The power connector around the back. The feet on the bottom are from an old computer. Um, yeah, so the only thing that's actually been purchased for this is the overlay. It's a surface capacitive overlay from 3M micro touch. It's a single touch, not multi touch. It's cross platform, works in both Mac and Windows, and also works in Linux or Linux. If you've got any questions, comments or queries, please leave them in the comments and I'll be uh, happy to read them and answer any questions. Also, if there's any improvements anyone can, any of you guys can think of, I'd love to hear them. This is basically just a review. It's a prototype model made to my university dissertation. So I'd just like any ideas, any comments anything that may be useful to further development and thanks for watching